and welcome back to uh, another reading with Dave Booker. Today I'm going to do some more flash fiction. Uh, I've got a few of them here, but uh, we're just going to do one. Uh, it's called Round and Round Again. So uh, I really would appreciate it if people would start leaving comments to let me know if you like these. Uh, if you do like them, let me know. If you don't like them, let me know. And let me know why you didn't like them so I can make them better. But this one's again called Round and Round Again. Mary, Mary waited at the portal for the time machine to finish off its calculations. She contemplated her self-appointed mission. She was determined to travel back and prevent her parents from getting together. She realized the detrimental effect this would have on herself, but considered this to be of no consequence. She had not asked to be born, and she hated her life. She was too intelligent. Her brilliance had become a burden. No man or woman wanted to be her companion, and she was lonely. She was too conscious of self to commit suicide and had constructed her machine to handle the situation in the only manner acceptable to herself. This had to succeed as it was a one-way trip. Stepping through as the calculations completed, she wandered through the park where her parents had met. She sat on a bench and waited. It wasn't long before an exceedingly handsome man joined her. He looked bewildered and forlorn. His misery seemed to match her own, and she inquired as to its cause. He bewailed the intelligence that determined him unable to find a partner through life. She acknowledged the same feelings and desire for a life mate. Like minds had found like hearts, and they talked until evening arrived. He offered her dinner, and she eagerly accepted. They discussed all the subjects with equal facility. Within moments, these two had found a partner who would stimulate and inspire each other. In days, they were married and soon after produced a daughter. The daughter was far too intelligent and was good for her. She became lonely, reclusive, sullen, and despondent. At the age of 19, she worked unceasingly on creating a time machine to go back and ensure her parents never met. So that's uh, that. I think we've got enough time. We can do one more. For <clears throat> beg your pardon. For a week, he had noticed he was losing his hearing. For some reason, it was all right while using his phone. But other than that, he was having difficulty hearing the people speaking to him. The voices came to him muffled and indistinct. He was having difficulty in hearing the traffic that rushed by as he crossed the street. He moaned forlornly at the loss of the song of the many birds that he could see in the trees. Their beaks opened and closed and saw him, but it was lost on him. He would sit in the park and watch the dogs at play. He could tell they were barking in merriment as they chased balls or each other, but no bark reached his ears. He texted the clinic to see if they could see him. He was lucky they lived or they had an opening in an hour. He hopped onto the bus and rode in silence to the facility. As he opened the door, he looked up to see the bell silently swinging. He signed in and sat. Around him, people conversed as he could tell by the movement of their lips, but no sound reached his ears. In frustration, he was almost moved to tears. A tap on his shoulder, and he looked up to see a nurse ushering him towards the back. Seated in front of the doctor's desk, he poured out his fears and frustration at his loss of hearing. The doctor came out from behind his desk and squatted in front of him. His mouth moved, but he could not hear what, he was, what was being said. Tears rose and overflowed. The, doctor held, the doctor's hand reached forward towards the man's ears. A slight popping and the noise around him flooded in both ears. The doctor held out his hand. Cradled in the palm were a small pair of ear pods. That will be forty-five fifty. So that's my two uh, ones that I'm doing for today. I'm going to come up with some more. I'm thinking about doing some uh, nursery rhyme ones. Just the kind of the ironic style where we do uh, a story, but it ain't going to end the way you expect it to. Those are always fun, and I enjoy doing those. So we'll see what we can do. Let's think about doing Mary Had a Little Lamb and maybe Three Little Pigs or Pumpkin, pumpkin, pumpkin Eater or whatever it was. 
Peter, Peter, pumpkin eater. Um, there was a time years ago when I was reading one of my dad's books that uh, had something similar to that, where uh, instead of changing the words, they merely omitted them. For instance, uh, Peter, Peter, pumpkin eater wife had, uh, had a wife and couldn't blank her. So he stuck her in a pumpkin shell and there he blanked her very well. So those are fun to do too. I mean, see if I can come up ones that weren't done in the past and see if uh, I can come up some more. If you've got any suggestions of things that you'd like to hear uh, written or maybe a book that you have written that you'd like to have parts read, I'd be more than happy to do it. I'm always looking for a new material to put on here. So let me know. Poetry is fine too. In fact, I think next time I will be doing a poem. So hopefully you'll be here to hear that. So thank you again for visiting. Sorry these are so short, but it is flax fiction, and that's, that's pretty short stuff. So again, thank you for coming, and I hope to see you on the next reading. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>